I told you about the U2 concert I went to in the Cow Palace in San Francisco in 1987. Man, it was, it was like a worship service. And I told you about the group of friends in the laundromat in uh, 1970 on Telegraph Avenue in Berkeley. Well, that wasn't quite like a worship service. But in both stories, we're talking about community and the sense of belonging to a community. Let me ask you a question. What are people most attracted to? Truth or love? See, I think it's love. Jesus said, they'll know that you're my followers if you have love for one another. It's that sense of belonging to a group of people who sincerely love. That's what draws people. In my opinion, this is why most of our witnessing falls very short of our expectations. It's because we're trying to tell people the truth. We're trying to convince them of something, win the argument, win the debate, instead of sharing true love in the, in the new community of God. There's a disconnection between what we think should work and what actually does work. We've turned our services into purely evangelistic crusades and we have a strong attachment to the big event. I told you in the story about how an evangelist who could win a thousand people to Jesus every night, and that's a big event. One thousand people coming to faith every night, but it would take that guy 16,400 years to win the present population of the world. But I told you on the other hand, if one person shared the gospel with one and then walked with them for a year and then the two of them shared with one and walked for a year and then the four and the eight and the 16 and the 32, it would only take 33 years to win the people of this world to Jesus Christ. You see the disconnection between what we believe will work and what actually does work? Do you also see in this chapter the phrases and techniques we've built up over time that have birthed their own casual doctrines? We talk about Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. Is there any other kind? We say, accept Jesus into your heart. You know, in Jesus' time, the center of emotions was in the kidneys. <laughs> we talk about the sinner's prayer. And whether we like it or not, the concept of winning is really only referred to one time in the Bible, and that's in 1 Peter, where he says that unbelieving wives can win their husbands without a word. See, I think we put our energy into making converts when Jesus' command to us was to put our energy into making disciples, followers, devoted followers of Jesus Christ. How do we best do that? I don't think it's by winning the debate. I think it's by living out our relationship with Jesus in community, attracting them by the Spirit and in power. So what does a witness do? He tells not what he believes, but what he experienced, just like in a court of law. It's like John the, the Apostle said in his first epistle, what I have tasted and touched and handled, that's what I'm telling you about. You know. I can't imagine the apostles witnessing, handing out tracts and collaring people on street corners. Instead, what we see is them living in community and we see miracles, the power of God. They were so different as a community that it was impossible to ignore. The ancients used this phrase, contra mundum. It means against the world, but it doesn't mean to hate people. It means to live in strong contrast to the values of the world around us. That's what we're called to do. And if we did that today, we just might shake up our world. So here are my questions for you. What really brought you to Jesus? What about your life shows Jesus to the world around you? What does it mean to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus? What would a Christian community look like today that attracted people to them like the early church did?